Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in this video, it's just going to be pretty much a very quick demonstration of a voltage regulator cir circuit, how it works and how we can build one on a breadboard. And so as you can see, it's quite crazy that literally you can drop voltage. So in our instance, we're going to take 12 volts, drop it across this diode, get five volts out. This is a Zeno diode, by the way. So we're going to get five volts out of our output here. So input of our circuit this way, output of our circuit that way. So yeah. I'll show you how it works. I've got 12 volt power supply here to have. So grounded this side and then we'll power this side. And then we'll have a look at our output voltage. So this resistor here is our output. And you can see here 5.15 volts at our output. So just to show you that this power supply is 12 volts. Let me just um, connect negative over there. And then I've got a resistor here. So we're literally just we're going to drop 12 volts across this resistor, right, positive. And then let's check our voltage across this resistor. There you go. We've got 12.01 volts across this resistor by itself. And let's power our circuit again. And you can see here 5.15 volts across our resistor. So that's how you take 12 volts and drop it down to 5 volts. So this is a, quite an oversimplification, especially because if you're bothered about how much current you want, then you got to calculate this value of this resistor. So here in this instance, I'm using a one kilo ohm resistor here, which is our input resistor. I'm also using a one kilo ohm resistor at our output, and I'm using a 5.1 volt Zener diode there. I'll just quickly show you how to build it on a breadboard. Obviously, you can see that there, but in case, I don't know, maybe you're not confident on breadboards, I'll show you how to quickly build it. And then what we'll also do is we'll actually jump onto multi-sim now, probably give me about a minute or two. And then I'll show you how the different values of the resistors can affect current and everything through a voltage regula regulator. So, yeah, all you need is basically our Zener diode here, two resistors, which one we're using for load and one we're using to, to control the current in the circuit. And then two jumper cables as well. That's it. So we take our one kilo ohm resistor, connect it to our VCC. So you connect that on the breadboard like that. Nice and simple, right? Then you now need to, okay, we'll do the diode first. So you just need to know in terms of using a Zener diode, you know, in terms of the black line on it, which way is which. So this way with current going this way, it's forward biased, which obviously for Zener diodes, we want to reverse bias them. So we do them based on that line with the line that way. So that's how we reverse bias a Zener diode. Connect our Zener diode in. So we've got our resistor positive there and the Zener diode there to ground. So now we need to connect these. I actually need to move the Zener diode up, which I will do. So if I take this small jumper wire that I've got and put it in right next to the resistor, like so, then I can just take the Zener diode and move it up, like so. So now I've got the resistor. Let me just move the resistor that make it easier. Okay, there we go. So we've got resistor, then jumper wire to the diode, and the diode's going to ground. Now we want to parallel our output to the diode. So if I test this circuit as it is now, you'll find that we'll get 5.1 volts dropped across this diode. And then our output is just in parallel to that. So let's just power this circuit and then you'll see how we get 5.1 volts through our diode. So there you go. So 5.18 volts through our diode or across our diode. All right, so then all we need to do is take our longer jumper wire from our resistor again, basically you just want them long enough to get away from the diode. And then our output is just in parallel to the diode. And that's it. Now we've got our output there. And so yeah, it is just super simple to make, which is crazy really. So if I test this now, we'll get 5.18 volts across this diode. And then again, 5.18 volts across this resistor as well. So let's uh, power it. So I was just about to check and I've just realized that the resistor is not actually in the right hole. It needs to be one over there. So let's move that up. There you go. Okay. So now we'll have 5.16 volts across our output and across our diode. 5.16 volts as well. Nice. And so that's it. That's how you take a 12 volt input here, drop it across your resistor, and then the diode obviously is in reverse biased will then obviously drop 5.1 volts across it you can put you know 3.3 volt zener diode there and then get 3.3 volts out it's actually a really nice and super simple easy way to get whatever voltage you want out of, a, out of an input now one thing to note if you are doing this is that 
depending on how much current you get you're obviously going to need certain power rating resistors so i'm using a one kilo ohm resistor here if i use a lower ohm which gives out more current then this would heat up and start to melt so in that instance there you'd have to use a higher power rated resistor all right so let's just quickly jump on the multi sim and then we'll run this off so i use multi sim but i mean in reality you can use any any uh, simulation software you want let's put our ideal zener diode in like so go with our dc 12 volts then put in our two 1k resistors and then we just need a ground go so this resistor here is obviously our, our, our v out or our, our load so we can get the voltage across this let's make our diode 5.1 volts 12 volt supply let's run so here we're getting 5.05 volts obviously this is an ideal diode the one that we use in real life isn't ideal now what's probably more important and something to keep in mind if you are actually going to do this is current you've obviously got to think about how much current you want going through your diode likewise through your load as well so let's take a look at our current through our load and our diode so we've got five milliamps going through our load and we've got 1.89 milliamps going through our diode let's see what happens when i reduce this down to 100 ohms and also up to uh, 10k and 100k ohms so we'll go down to 100 ohms first so we're at 1.89 milliamps through the diode at the moment and five milliamps for our load now you can see we've got 60 milliamps for our diode still five milliamps for our load and we still got five volts across our load so 100 ohms would do however you better have a decently power rated resistor or that might burn out okay let's go with 10k now we've only got one volt across our diode and 200 nanoamps worth of current rather than a diode so definitely 10k is not going to do it so yeah so choosing the right value resistor can get a little bit tricky i mean 1k just happened to work out here in this instance but depending on what output you want you're going to have to do some calculations which they're not too hard to be honest with you if you haven't done this in real life give it a go honestly it's not too difficult and getting the parts are actually super easy you just need a 5.1 volt zener diode which they literally sell them all over amazon and they're really cheap on ebay you can get them even cheaper you obviously just need two 1k resistors i mean you don't really even need this resistor and then you just need a 12 volt supply which you know you can get from an ac to dc power adapter i mean you don't actually even need a power supply you can actually just buy those 12 volt batteries these ones here yeah so it's not difficult nothing to be scared about 100% give it a go me and myself I, in future I'd really like to actually build this on a perf board and actually be able to connect some proper loads to it so I think I'll give this a go I look forward to building this kind of stuff all right so if you guys enjoyed the video leave a like and I shall see you in the next one peace